it is 310 shall we start elan okay sir okay we can start how many people have there are still some more coming in i think no no that no why is it reducing now sai Doctor, if people they cannot wait long doctor this kahoot will time out automatically okay 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 please okay please okay then we can better start okay shall we start now yeah yes sir ah uh, good afternoon everybody welcome to the karmurthy quiz uh, uh, there was one uh, quiz which we did around 24 hours uh, 48 hours back and because of a technical issue it couldn't be projected on to the all and uh, not many participants could log in so within the past uh, 48 hours we had to prepare a next uh, set of questions and i would like to thank our uh, quiz masters dr vidyaeshwaran and dr shweta and uh, they will be conducting the quiz uh, from now on welcome dr vidya and uh, dr shweta i would like to thank the uh, our scientific committee chairman dr elan kumar the coscon team and the technical support we got from um, both uh, sai and the kaskan technical team in um, organizing this uh, quiz program welcome everybody and uh, you'll get an exciting exchange of knowledge in addition to prizes which will be given by the uh, karnataka ophthalmic society to the top 2 thank you very much uh, thank you sir i would like to thank you particularly you and your team vidya ishwaran and shweta and all the entire thank team you, sir. within 36 hours you have changed the entire set of questions brought in a new team hats off to you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir uh, a very good afternoon to everybody uh, thank you professor nagarajo and dr elan kumar and sir uh, for this opportunity uh, so i hope all of you have a very good time good luck and uh, we'll begin soon okay so uh, just to so that you can familiarize yourself with the kahoot app we are going to have a set of five general knowledge questions uh, we'll follow that up with the ophthalmology questions the actual uh, uh, kr murthy memorial quiz so let all the action begin okay good luck so there are no marks for these uh, sample questions uh, so after the fifth question Uh, the actual quiz will start and that's where your scoring will start all right thank you okay so the first question is which of the following are energy foods carbohydrates and fats proteins and mineral salts vitamins and minerals water and roughage i repeat the question which of the following are energy foods okay this is not going to carry any marks this is just so you familiarize yourself with the kahoo tab okay okay time's running out time's up so carbohydrates and fats are the energy foods okay we'll move on to the next question please all right the largest of the seven continents is australia asia europe africa so the largest of the seven continents is australia asia europe or africa okay 10 seconds left we have another 5 seconds to go okay and the right answer is obviously asia that's where we all live okay the next question please who was known as the iron man of india was it govind ballabh pant jawahar lal nehru subhash chandra bose or sardar vallabhbhai patel okay who was known as the iron man of india was it govind ballabh pant jawahar lal nehru subhash chandra bose or sardar vallabhbhai patel who was known as the iron man of india okay 5 seconds left okay and the right answer is sardar vallabhbhai patel okay moving on to the next question please this musical historical drama released in 2017 won a national award for best music direction 
वॉज इट चिन्नारी मुत्ता सत्य हरिश्चंद्र अल्लामा और बाहुबली okay i think uh, this is something that almost all of us uh, in the audience would have watched so is it chinnari mutta satya harish chandra allamma or bahubali this musical historical drama national award for best music direction okay okay and the right answer is of course bahubali okay moving on to the last of the sample questions okay this is uh, okay i'll call this a brain teaser okay <laughs> next question please the official language of china is kannada hindi chinese or spanish okay we've given you 30 seconds for this question but i'm sure all of you will have already answered the question so i'm going to give you like another 5 seconds and then uh, we're going to move on to the actual quiz okay can we move forward Yes, and the official language of China. Oh, is it Hindi? No, this is the wrong answer. It is Chinese. Okay. All right. With this, uh, yeah, obviously we are all confused about the answer. Okay, Quizmaster's decision is final. No, I don't agree. This is not Hindi. It is Chinese. All right. So let's move on to the uh, actual quiz now. Okay. One small disclaimer. okay can we move on please okay all the very best to all participants think answer slowly no negative marking okay i'm sure all of you uh, are going to ace this good luck let's begin so true about molluscum contagiosum it is caused by a single stranded dna pox virus it is seen in otherwise healthy children halber stay or the provisec inclusion bodies are seen chronic papillary conjunctivitis may be seen which of the following is true about molluscum contagiosum okay you have 10 seconds okay so molluscum contagiosum is actually caused by a double stranded dna pox virus uh you see henders and peters and inclusion bodies and sometimes there may be an associated chronic follicular conjunctivitis so the right answer is that molluscum is seen in otherwise healthy children okay we we'll move on to the next question seurotosis may be caused by all of the following except contralateral lid retraction ipsilateral hypotropia inferior oblique overaction dermatochelesis pseudotosis okay can be caused by all of the following except contralateral lid retraction ipsilateral hypotropia inferior oblique overaction dermatochelesis okay 5 seconds to go times up okay and the right answer is inferior oblique overaction inferior oblique overaction tends to cause elevation of the eye right the second reaction of inferior oblique is elevation as a result of which there is likely to be hyper deviation and pseudotosis is something that is associated with hypotropia okay it may be associated with hypotropia so what exactly do you mean by the pseudotosis the amount of ptosis that can be corrected when the eye fixates if it is associated with hypotropia with a contralateral uh, lid retraction okay uh, sometimes the uh, normal eye may appear to be ptotic and dermatochelesis can sometimes give an appearance of pseudotosis all right we we'll move on to the next question incorrect about dorsal midbrain syndrome incorrect about dorsal midbrain syndrome lid retraction is seen up gaze paralysis is present seesaw nystagmus is seen light near dissociation is present so which of the following is incorrect about dorsal midbrain syndrome you have 10 seconds to go okay and the right answer or what is incorrect about perinod syndrome or dorsal midbrain syndrome is that seesaw nystagmus is seen what you see is convergence retraction 
nystagmus. Okay, it is associated with lid retraction, upgaze paralysis, and light near dissociation or Argyle Robertson pupil. The type of uh, nystagmus that is seen uh, uh, with paracellar lesions, okay, is seesaw nystagmus. Okay, with this, we'll move on to the next question. True about blepharophimosis, stosis, and epicanthus inversus syndrome. Inheritance is autosomal recessive. BPES type 2 is associated with premature ovarian failure. Mutations on FOXL2 gene on chromosome 3. Telecanthus can be corrected by Wies procedure. So which of the following is true about this BPES syndrome? Lephrophimosis, stosis and epicanthus inversus syndrome. Which is true? And the right answer is there are mutations on FOXL2 gene on chromosome 3. The inheritance of BPS syndrome is autosomal dominant. There are two types, BPS1 and BPS2. BPS1 is associated with premature ovarian failure. Telecanthus can be corrected by transnasal wiring or mustardase or mustardase double Z plus T. All right, move on to the next question. All are true of Uri blepharon, except lateral canthal malposition, medial ectropion, lateral ectropion, lag of thalmos. So in Uri blepharon, what is not seen? Lateral canthal malposition, medial ectropion, lateral ectropion, or lag of thalmos. Okay, all are true except. Five seconds to go. move on to the answers okay all are true of uh, uri blepharon uh, okay medial ectropion is not seen i'm sorry i think the answer key is wrong we'll just rectify that medial ectropion is not seen in uri blepharon okay there is a lateral canthal malposition the lateral canthus is at a higher level there is a lateral ectropion lag of thermos may be present and sometimes there may be a nocturnal exposure okay we'll move on to the next question true about canaliculitis, okay? Canaliculitis is caused by gram-negative bacteria actinomyces israeli. It causes an acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis. Dacryocystorhinostomy is the treatment of choice and it causes a pouting punctum, okay? So what is true about canaliculitis? Five seconds to go. Okay, so what is true is you see a pouting punctum, okay. Uh, canaliculitis is caused by a gram-positive bacteria, actinomyces israeli. It causes a chronic conjunctivitis and the treatment of choice would be either a canaliculotomy or a punctal three-snip procedure, all right, along with a cure touch. Okay, next question, please. Braley sign is... Increase in IOP on upcase due to inferior rectus re restriction, pre-tibial myxedema, asymmetric fundal glow and distant direct ophthalmoscopy, opticociliary shunt. Okay, Braley sinus increase in IOP on upgaze due to IR restriction, pre-tibial myxedema, asymmetric fundal glow and distant direct ophthalmoscopy, and an opticociliary shunt. Okay, so. The right answer is uh, Braley sign is an increase in the IOP on up gaze of more than around six millimeters of mercury due to inferior rectus restriction. All right, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, lymphangiomas are choristomas, combined venous lymphatic malformations, port wine stains, and they can present in old age with chocolate cyst. Okay, so what are lymphangiomas? Are they choristomas? Are they port wine stains? Are they combined venous lymphatic malformations? Or do they present in old age with a chocolate cyst? We have another five seconds to go. Okay, so what are these lymphangiomas? They are classified as combined venous lymphatic malformations according to the mullikan glowacki classification. So choristoma is uh, an example for a choristoma is a dermoid cyst, wherein you find normal tissue in an abnormal location. 
Okay, port wine stain is associated with Sturge Weber syndrome, and lymphangiomas classically have uh, a presentation of acute proptosis. Okay, because of an acute bleed inside, known as a chocolate cyst, and that is seen in children. It is not seen in old age. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Soft shell technique has been described by Steve A. Arshnoff, Jack Holiday, Kenneth J. Hoffer, Warren Hill. So, who has described soft shell technique? Steve A. Arshnoff, Jack Holiday, Kenneth J. Hoffer, or Warren Hill? Five seconds to go. Okay, and time's up. So the soft shell technique has been described by uh, Steve A. Arshinov, wherein we first coat the endothelium with a dispersive agent, dispersive OVD, okay? And then we inject a, a cohesive uh, OVD. So it's very easy to remove. So wherever your uh, endothelium is uh, compromised, we can use this soft shell technique, such as while performing cataract surgery on patients with fugues or low endothelial counts due to any other uh, uh, reason. All right, we'll move on to the next question. So it's called Arshinov soft shell technique. What is true about perimetry? Yellow stimulus on blue background, swap, parvocellular pathway, FDT, loss variance is seen with Humphrey analysis, estimate strategy, binocular field testing. So which of the following is true? You have 10 seconds to go. All right. Okay. And the right answer is estimate strategy. There are some countries where this binocular field testing is mandatory prior to issuing a driver's license. So for that, we use this strategy known as estimate strategy. So short wave automated perimetry is when you use a blue stimulus on a yellow background. In frequency doubling technique, we use the magnocellular, we are testing the integrity of the magnocellular pathway. Loss variance is uh, uh, one of the reliability indexes in your octopus perimeter. Okay, move on to the next question. The following appeared incorrectly. Acetazolamide, Steven Johnson syndrome, brimonidine crosses blood-brain barrier in children, Latanoprost causes hypopigmentation of surrounding skin. Timolol causes Raynaud's phenomenon. So which of the following appeared incorrectly? Acetazolamide causes Steven Johnson syndrome. Brimonidine causes a blood-brain barrier in children. Latanoprost uh, causes hypopigmentation. Timolol causes Raynaud's phenomenon. Time over. And the right answer is that Latanoprost actually causes hyperpigmentation of the surrounding kit surrounding skin okay it causes hyperpigmentation of surrounding skin uh, you get longer eye about the technical glitch we'll move on to the next question please all of the following are examples of non-penetrating glaucoma surgeries except canaloplasty viscocanalostomy trabeculectomy deep sclerectomy Okay, all of the following are examples of non-penetrating glaucoma surgeries, except canaloplasty, viscocanalostomy, trabeculectomy, deep sclerectomy. So which of the following are examples of non-penetrating glaucoma surgeries? Okay, five seconds to go. Yes, and the right answer would be trabeculectomy. Okay, so what are these non-penetrating glaucoma surgeries? As you people are aware, uh, non-penetrating glaucoma surgeries include those where we don't uh, open up the trabecular meshwork. Whereas in trabeculectomy, we're actually creating a guarded fistula between your anterior chamber and the episcleral space. Okay, we'll move on to the next question, please. All are true about glaucomatocyclitic crisis, except Recurrent attacks of bilateral raised IOP, it's more common in females, seen in the sixth decade, and the mechanism is pre presumed to be acute trabeculitis. Okay, all are true about glaucomatocyclotic crisis, except, okay, five seconds to go, the time is ticking.
and the right answer is that the mechanism is presumed to be acute trabeculitis glucomatocyclic crisis also known as posner schlossman syndrome involves recurrent attacks of unilateral raised iop seen more commonly in the second to third decade in males all right and the mechanism is presumed to be acute trabeculitis secondary to a viral infection which could be because of herpes simplex or cytomegalovirus okay we move on to the next question true about ghost cell glaucoma okay you see candy stripe sign secondary ankle closure glaucoma wbcs in the vitreous contain hinds bodies there may be a hypopion in the anterior chamber okay so what is true about ghost cell glaucoma candy stripe sign secondary ankle closure glaucoma wbc is in the vitreous contain hinds bodies hypopion in the anterior chamber okay so what is true hands up and the right answer is candy stripe sign so what is this candy stripe sign uh, there are alternative bands of ghost cells and fresh cells so where do you see this ghost cell glaucoma whenever there is an intraocular hemorrhage it is a type of secondary open angle glaucoma and the red blood cells in the vitreous appear to be empty so they are called ghost cells and they contain denatured hemoglobin known as hinds bodies sometimes you may see a pseudo hypopion in the anterior chamber when these ghost cells are present in the anterior chamber it may appear like a pseudo hypopion not a true hypopion all right so candy stripe sign is the right answer we'll move on to the next question please all of the following are true of sympathetic ophthalmitis except it's a bilateral uveitis anterior uveitis granulomatous uveitis dal and fuchs nodules bilateral uveitis anterior uveitis granulomatous uveitis dal and fuchs nodules okay so which all of the following are true except 10 seconds to go so what is wrong of sympathetic ophthalmitis okay so sympathetic ophthalmitis by definition is a bilateral granulomatous pan uveitis okay so it involves all uh, the three parts of your uveal tract that is your iris ciliary body as well as the choroid okay so it's a bilateral granulomatous pan uveitis next question please indications for past planar vitrectomy in advanced diabetic eye disease include severe persistent vitreous hemorrhage low risk pdr combined regmatogenous and fractional rd premacular retrohyaloid hemorrhage so what are the indications for pars planar vitrectomy okay all of the following except okay which does it not include so uh, indications uh, okay uh, i'm sorry there's a technical glitch we will uh, rectify this so indications for past planar vitrectomy include all okay there is severe persistent vitreous hemorrhage combined regmatogenous and uh, tractional rd premacular retrohyaloid hemorrhage uh, for low risk pdr it is not indicated we'll move on to the next question hla b51 associated uveitis shows the following except okay hypopion in a white eye positive pathology test retinal occlusive vasculitis and amsler's sign so hla b51 associated uveitis shows all of the following except okay hypopion in a white eye positive pathology test retinal occlusive vasculitis and amsler's sign yes uh, hla b51 uh, is associated with bechet's disease so there is a hypopion in a white eye positive pathology test and vasculitis is pretty characteristic of uh, bechet's disease amsler sign is seen in fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis okay we'll move on to the next question all of the following are true of progressive outer retinal necrosis except seen in immunocompromised individuals seen in otherwise normal individuals cherry red spot may be seen and a cracked mud appearance of the fundus okay 
okay so all are true except and the right answer is seen in otherwise normal individuals progress of outer retinal necrosis is caused by herpes zoster okay and it is seen in immunocompromised individuals particularly in uh, hiv patients uh, associated with a cherry red spot and in the late stages because of fibrosis the fundus shows a cracked mud appearance okay go on to the next question please all are true of brush field spots except it occurs in down syndrome it occurs in normal individuals with light iridis may be surrounded by a ring of hyperplasia and it has no malignant potential so what are these brush field spots okay all are true except they occur in down syndrome occur in normal individuals with light iridis may be surrounded by a ring of hyperplasia and they carry no malignant potential all are true except okay so brush field spots uh, are usually uh, uh, so the appearance is in the center there is hypoplasia surrounded by a ring of hypoplasia okay so they occur in down syndrome they may occur in normal individuals with uh, light iridis and they carry no malignant potential okay we'll move on to the next question differential diagnosis of an amelanotic melanoma include all except solitary choroidal granuloma posterior scleritis prominent vertex vein ampulla congenital hypertrophy of rpe okay 10 seconds to go so what are the differential diagnosis of amelanotic melanoma okay all except okay congenital hypertrophy of rp or chirpy is a differential diagnosis for a pigmented or a melanotic melanoma okay uh, whereas all the others that is solitary choroidal granuloma postural scleritis and prominent vertex vein ampulla actually appear pale in comparison a vertex vein ampulla will disappear when you apply pressure on the globe sometimes posterior scleritis may be associated with an elevation that you see in the retina that may mimic an amelanotic melanoma okay we we'll move on to the next question with this the following are paired incorrectly okay hard exudates and cholesterol cotton wool spots and cytoid bodies irma arterial venular shunts arterial arteriolar venular shunts none of the above which of the following are paired incorrectly okay which of the following are paired uh, incorrectly hard exudates cholesterol cotton wool spots cytoid bodies irma arterial venular shunts none of the above and the right answer is none of the above all of the following are paired correctly okay hard exudates are basically deposits of cholesterol electron microscopy of uh, the cotton wool spots shows the presence of cytoid bodies irma intraretinal microvascular anomalies are actually arterial arteriolar venular shunts that you see in diabetes okay next next question please blink okay will not be reduced in uh okay the first option is actually coma second option is thyroidoid disease parkinson's disease or progressive supranuclear palsy okay sorry the first question okay it's not heart coma it is just coma thyroidoid disease parkinson's disease and progressive supranuclear palsy so blink will not be reduced in coma thyroidoid disease parkinson's disease progressive supranuclear palsy and the right answer is thyroidoid disease all of these others will actually reduce your frequency of blinking which may give rise to dry eye and uh, all other neurotropic keratitis and all other issues whereas in thyroid eye disease the main mechanism for uh, dry eye is the increased uh, surface area of exposure okay because of your uh, lid retraction all right next pulsatile proptosis is seen in all except neurofibromatosis keratococcus fistula orbital metastasis 
or arteriovenous malformations okay so pulsatile proptosis is seen in all except neurofibromatosis keratico cavernous fistula orbital meds or arteriovenous malformations okay so and the right answer would be that pulsatile proptosis is seen in neurofibromatosis because of sometimes your greater wing of sphenoid can be absent so your csf pulsations are direct, directly transmitted to your orbit keratico cavernous fistula what happens your uh, carotid uh, pressure is transmitted to your uh, 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 i mean uh, because of the uh, fistula fistula tract itself there can be pulsations and in av malformations what happens is arterialization of the veins giving rise to pulsatile proptosis whereas you see nothing like that in orbital meds okay we'll move on to the next question all are features of chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia except it's a mitochondrial muscle dystrophy the muscle histopathology shows the presence of rash Can we move on to the next question, please? Okay, all are true of Horner's syndrome except it causes complete ptosis, it causes anhydrosis, it causes heterochromia, and it shows a positive cocaine test. Okay, with question number twenty-five, we are halfway through. Horner's syndrome causes all of the following except. Complete ptosis, anhydrosis, heterochromia, positive cocaine test. All right. Okay, time's almost running out. Horner syndrome never causes a complete ptosis. It usually causes a small ptosis. Okay. Uh, so, what is your Horner syndrome? It's nothing but ocular sympathetic palsy. So, your sympathetic fibers supply the Muller's muscle. Okay. So, your Muller's muscle is responsible for that. Two millimeter elevation of the eyelid. So, in case of Horner's syndrome, there's a very small droop. Okay, and it also causes anhydrosis, heterochromia, and it is associated with a positive cocaine test. Okay, we we'll move on to the next question. Light near dissociation is seen in all except Perrinot syndrome, syphilis, aberrant third nerve regeneration, myasthenia gravis. Where all can you get this light near dissociation? Perinots, syphilis, aberrant third nerve regeneration, and myasthenia gravis. Okay, light near dissociation is seen in all except. Okay. Okay. So myasthenia gravis is predominantly a disease of your neuromuscular junction. and uh, it is manifest as symptoms in your skeletal muscle system okay so light near dissociation also known as argyle robertson pupil wherein your pupil will not constrict for your light reflex but for near reflex there will be decrease in size of the pupil that's why it is called a dissociation or argyle robertson pupil myasthenia never affects the pupil all right this is something to remember so no light near dissociation with myasthenia next question please Which of the following is not true about ocular development? Optic groove appears at third week. Embryonic fissure closes at twenty-four weeks. Lens plate forms at the fourth week. Rods differentiate at the seventh month. So optic groove appears at the third week. Embryonic fissure closes at twenty-four weeks. Lens plate at fourth week. Rods differentiate at the seventh month. So which is not true about ocular development? Okay, so uh, the right answer is that the embryonic fissure closes at one and a half months. Okay, say around six weeks, not twenty-four weeks. All right, so that is a, a correct answer, or that is the incorrect answer point of view. Okay, the rest of the answers are all right. Okay, next question, please. 
which of the following is false about gonio lenses goldman single mirror 62 degree angle zeiss four mirrors two mirrors at 52 degrees and two at 64 degrees susman is a four, four mirror lens rich trabecular plasti lens has two mirrors at 59 and two mirrors at 62 so which of the following is false about gonio lenses okay have five more seconds to go which of the following is false about gonio lenses okay so the zeiss four mirror has all four mirrors oriented at 64 degrees okay not two mirrors at one angle and the other two at another angulation all are oriented at 64 degrees okay we'll move on to the next question please the mulberry type the kumkua type the band catapathy like type and stromal type are all types of what the mulberry kumkua the band catapathy and stromal opacity type are types of schneider crystalline dystrophy gelatinous droplet dystrophy infectious crystalline keratopathy or corneal keloid okay you have 10 seconds to go mulberry kumquat band keratopathy stromal opacity type okay all of these are types of gelatinous droplet dystrophy all right okay we'll move on to the next question Meeke syndrome is a type of crystalloneuropathy a type of facial dyskinesia a type of gaze palsy characterized by bilateral spasmodic orbicularis oculi so what is this meeke syndrome so what is this meeke syndrome is it a type of crystalloneuropathy a gaze palsy facial dyskinesia What's spasmodic orbicularis oculi? Okay, Meeke syndrome is actually a type of facial dyskinesia. So, uh, okay, so basically you will see a component of blepharospasm in patients who have Meeke syndrome. Blepharos uh, blepharospasm or hemifacial spasm, even. All right. We move on to the next question, please. Pack CSL. False statement about PAC CXL. Photo activated chromophore for infectious keratitis. Uses 0.1 percent riboflavin. Uses for 3 milliwatt per centimeter square for 15 minutes and uses 365 nanometer UV light. Okay. So, what is false about PAC CXL? Okay. so this photo activated chromophore for uh, infectious keratitis okay uh, with collagen cross linkage right uh, the wrong answer would be that it uses 3 milliwatt per centimeter square for 15 minutes okay we we'll move on to the next question please the reason for in vivo mitotic quiescence of corneal endothelium is due to activity of p53 activity of p27 lower levels of tgf p2 strong injury inducible cytokine pathway 360 strong injury inducible cytokine pathway okay so what is the reason for in vivo mitotic quiescence of corneal endothelium okay time is up okay so it is because of activity of p27 P27 basically has an anti-proliferative effect. It's a protein that has an anti-proliferative effect on your cell cycle. All right. We'll move on to the next question, please. Prisma guidelines are used for what? Prescribing prisms for children, population-based studies, systematic reviews, or treatment of choroidal melanoma. Prisma guide guidelines. are used for prescribing prisms for children population based studies systematic reviews and treatment of choroidal melanoma so what do you use these prisma guidelines for okay and the right answer is systematic reviews we use prisma guidelines for systematic reviews all right okay we'll go on to the next question please 
Atropine 0.01 percent is as effective as higher concentrations in myopic progression is laid down in atom one study, phase one of atom two study, phase two of atom two study, phase three of atom two study. Okay, so 0.01 percent atropine is as effective as higher concentrations. Where is it laid down in atom one, phase one, atom two, phase two, atom two, or phase three, atom two? Okay, almost running out of time. All right. So this atom is nothing but atropine for the treatment of myopia. Okay. Uh, originally they were using concentrations of 0.03 percent. Okay. In phase one of atom two, it was found that 0.01 is also as effective as higher concentrations. Okay. We'll move on to the next question. Identify the organism that is grown. Okay, so what organism is this? Okay, so obviously, uh, what organism is this? So we've shown you the culture plate as well as the histopathology. What organism is this? Okay, very. This is a pigmented fungus. It is called Alternaria. Okay, and it produces pigments. All right. Okay, we'll go on to the next question. Identify the clinical scenario here. Okay, is it Utah's phenomenon? Is it Herring's phenomenon? Is it Stelvac sign or is it Von Graffe's sign? Okay, what do you see over here? Utops, herring, stelvox sign, a von Graffe sign. Okay, what do you see here? Okay, and the right answer is herring's phenomenon. So, what you saw over there is an example of seesaw tosis. So, whichever eye is retracted, okay, the moment you pull that eye down, you'll see that the other eye also tends to drop, all right? So that is due to Herring's phenomenon, commonly seen uh, in this something, seesawtosis is something that you can see in patients who have myasthenia gravis, okay? Okay, we'll go on to the next question. The following histopathological section is seen in what? Okay, this is a histopathology slide. What is this? Identify this histopathology slide. Is it hyperkeratosis, sarcoidosis, seborrheic keratosis, or tuberculosis? So, what is this histopathological section? Okay. So, uh, what you saw was a horn cyst, okay? Uh, a horn cyst or a pseudo horn cyst, okay, is basically keratin, all right, that is seen within the epidermis. If it is just an invagination of the epidermis, it's a pseudo horn cyst. If it is uh, well surrounded by epidermis epithelium on all sides, as you saw in this case, this is a horn cyst that is seen in seborrheic keratosis, okay? Sarcoidosis tuberculosis will get a granulomatous inflammation. Okay, in hyperkeratosis, you'll just see excessive keratin layers. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Identify the type of giant cell. Okay, what type of giant cell do you see in this image, in this HPE section? Okay, is it the Langens giant cell? Is it the two-ton giant cell? Is it the shadow cell or is it none of the above? Langan's two-ton shadow, none of the above. What type of giant cell are you seeing in this image? Okay, very good. This is uh, the two-ton giant cell. Okay, so what are the giant cells of reference uh, relevance to us ophthalmologists or what do we see commonly? It's the two-ton giant cell, Langan's giant cell, foreign body giant cell and the tumor giant cell, okay. Two-ton giant cell, as you saw in this case, okay, the nuclei are concentrated in the center and in the periphery, you see vacuolated eosinophilic cytoplasm, commonly associated with 
that raculation is because of the fat actually okay so xanthelasma and things like that while processing all the fat would have dissolved giving rise to the vacuolation langhans type of giants and you see in two tons giant cell the nuclear concentrated more in the center whereas in a langhans giant cell either there's a horseshoe arrangement or the nuclear arranged more in the periphery and this is seen in tuberculosis sarcoidosis those kind of granulomatous uh, inflammatory conditions okay where do you see a foreign body giant cell foreign body giant cell your nuclei are scattered all over whenever there is a foreign body reaction reaction to some foreign body you may see a foreign body giant cell and in anaplastic tumors you'll be able to see a tumor giant cell okay so these are the giant cells of relevance to us as ophthalmologists okay we'll move on to the next question identify okay what is this is it a cioni ring 2 is it ctr amet aniridia ctr or iris coloboma ctr what is it what is it okay identify what you see 5 seconds to go okay so this is an aniridia ctr okay a capsular tension ring that you use in patients with aniridia so what you see is tinted sector sheets okay in addition to the two dialing holes what you see in the periphery are actually tinted sector sheets so that will serve to act as the pupil we'll move on to the next question the following procedure is done to correct what condition okay there's an image and uh, the patient has undergone a certain procedure okay so what are we going to correct is it advanced keratoconus is it irregular astigmatism is it press biopia or cosmetic correction of corneal opacity okay so what are we correcting with this procedure okay so this is a corneal inlay all right corneal inlay acu focus 7000 to be precise and it is used in the treatment of press biopia okay we'll move on to the next question all are true regarding the ciliary body except striated muscle contraction increases refractive power of lens oblique fibers facilitate aqueous outflow non student fibers facilitate accommodation all are true regarding ciliary body except striated muscle contraction increases refractive power of lens oblique fibers facilitate aqueous outflow non student fibers facilitate accommodation so which of the following is false regarding the ciliary body time is up and the right answer is that ciliary body is basically smooth muscle it is not striated muscle right so uh, that is that would be the correct answer or the wrong answer again point of view we'll move on to the next question please all are derived from neuroectoderm except rp optic nerve fibers retina or the corneal epithelium all of the following are neuroectodermal derivatives okay except one of these which one five seconds to go okay and the right answer would be corneal epithelium which is a derivative of the surface ectoderm all right we'll go on to the next question please gall spots are seen in vernal conjunctivitis trachoma neurotropic keratitis filamentary keratitis okay so where do you see these gall spots vernal conjunctivitis trachoma neurotropic keratitis or in filamentary keratitis where do you see gall spots okay gall spots are seen in neurotropic keratitis you uh, character characteristically look for gall spots by doing a retro illumination and you see these uh, whitish spots in neurotropic keratitis okay that are known as gall spots okay we'll move on to the next question 
all are gram negative bacilli except cerasia bacillus pseudomonas klebsiella cerasia bacillus pseudomonas klebsiella so all of the following are gram negative bacilli except cerasia bacillus pseudomonas klebsiella okay okay and the right answer is bacillus bacillus is a gram positive bacterium okay we'll move on to the next question acanthamoeba cis on staining by calcofloa white up here apple green in color purple red brown or bluish white how do these acanthamoeba cis appear on staining by calcofloa white Ten more seconds to go. Okay, and then we have five more questions to go. And the right answer would be apple green. Okay, so you use a fluorescence microscope along with calcofluor white to stain these acanthamoebuses, and they appear apple green in color. Okay, go on to the next question, please. All are true of infectious crystalline keratopathy, except common causes alpha hemolytic streptococci, commonly seen with corneal transplant. Steroids are a mainstay of treatment, and it responds poorly to fortified antibiotics. So, what is true of infectious crystalline keratopathy? All of the following are true, except okay, or rather, what is not true of infectious crystalline keratopathy? Common causes alpha hemolytic streptococcus. Commonly seen with a corneal transplant, steroids are a mainstay and respond poorly to fortified antibiotics. The right answer is that uh, we withdraw steroids the moment the patient develops infectious crystalline keratopathy. We are supposed to actually withdraw steroids. It's something that is uh, a little uh, difficult uh, to treat. Okay, but immediately withdraw steroids if you see infectious crystalline keratopathy. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, diameter of cornea planated by Golden Goldman aplanation tonometer is three point zero six millimeters, three point three three millimeters, three point six three millimeters, and zero point three six millimeters. So, what is the diameter of cornea aplanated by a Golden Goldman aplanation tonometer? Okay, ten seconds to go. Diameter of cornea aplanated by Goldman aplanation tonometer. Yes, and the right answer is uh, 3.06 millimeters. Okay, so the area aplanated by Goldman aplanation tonometer will be 7.354 millimeters square. Okay, so that will be pi d square by two, right? Okay, we'll move on to the next question, please. Concept of contact lenses was first described by Leonardo da Vinci, F. E. Muller, Gulstrand, Benjamin Franklin. Okay, who first described the concept of contact lenses? Was it Leonardo da Vinci, F. E. Muller, Gulstrand, or Benjamin Franklin? Okay, you have another ten seconds to go. Who described the concept of contact lenses? Da Vinci, Muller, Gulstrand, Benjamin Franklin. I don't know how many bookworms uh, are there, but this is something uh, that is there uh, in the Da Vinci Code, right? I don't know how many of you all uh, would have read uh, Da Vinci Code. Uh, so yeah, uh, Leonardo Da Vinci first described the concept of contact lenses, but uh, the first contact lenses were uh, created by or invented by uh, F. E. Muller. Okay, we'll move on to the next question, please. Blind spot was first described by Marie Colinet, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, Edmund Mariette, Donders. Blind spot was first described by Marie Colion Colinet, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, Edmund Mariette, or Donders. Who first described the blind spot? Five seconds to go. 
Okay, and the blind spot was first described by Edme Marriott. Hence, it is named after Marriott. So it's called the blind spot of Marriott. All right, we'll move on to the next question. And I think with this, uh, we're coming to the penultimate question. Who introduced the first supplination tonometer? Was it Goldman, Shiots, Maklakov, or Perkins? Goldman, Shiots, Shiots, Maklakov, or per Perkins? Who introduced the first applanation tonometer? Okay, and the first applanation tonometer was introduced by Maclaco. Okay, Goldman and Perkins are what we use today. Uh, Shiots is a type of indentation tonometer. So Maclaco first introduced the applanation tonometer. We'll move on to the next question, please. Okay, so with this, we have come to the uh, end of the session. Uh, I know there were two uh, incorrect uh, options in the answers. We'll uh, try and omit that from the quiz and we'll consider the other uh, 48 correct questions. Okay, and we will, uh, uh, you know, uh, assess the tallies and announce the results soon. Okay. Uh, over to Professor Nagraju. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vidya. That was an excellent uh, quiz which you conducted. I, I hope all the participants uh, enjoyed the quiz. And this is a driving force for you people to start studying in uh, depth rather than just uh, Googling and uh, trying to uh, just read in uh, bit mails. Try to read in depth uh, the textbooks and try to acquire in-depth knowledge that will be useful to you. Shortly, we will be announcing the results of the quiz. The top two winners will be uh, given a prize by the Karnataka Ophthalmic Society. And I think uh, this Kahoot platform will uh, assess the winner not only by the correct answer and also by the fastest finger, I guess. Sai, how long will it take to get the results? Doctor, what I'm going to do is, uh, <clears throat> there might be some result announcement uh -huh. by Kahoot on everybody's phone, but okay. uh, please uh, let us uh, please announce that you know it should not be considered. We yeah. will negate those two questions and we'll come back to you in another five minutes, Doctor. Okay. So question number five and 16, we're going to omit and we'll consider the other yes. 48 questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sai. And uh, thank you all for uh, the wonderful participation. Uh, KR Murthy Memorial Quiz, uh, uh, it's been an honor to host, host uh, this quiz. Uh, I was uh, a participant, uh, probably not so long ago. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's like actually an honor to be on this side, uh, to be hosting this quiz. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Ellen Kumar is going to come and uh, announce the results shortly. Dr. Shweta, you are there? Yes, sir, I'm there. You also come on screen. Can the quiz masters... It was, uh, nice. it was a nice quiz, uh, Vidya. Can the quiz masters tell how you computed all the questions and the choices? Yeah, it was a learning curve even for us. It's always uh, safer to be on this side. Okay. What do you advise? Easier to be on the other side and more fun to be on the other side. Now what uh, are your but... uh, tips to get good uh, marks to go to, to score better in a quiz? What are your tips in the quiz students, to the students? In the quiz. Yeah. Uh, don't I think it is uh, most of the times it is fastest finger first. So and uh, to and whatever if the read if the read in depth. So yeah, preparation. In preparation in depth, I think, is one important thing. I feel now. And uh, reading in between the lines, sir. Okay. And yes. and in depth reading, as Dr. Sheta was saying. Uh, 
and i think we should thank uh, both the coscon technical team and uh, uh, sai yeah. for bearing with us for the past i think uh, four five days uh, we were just keeping yeah. we have, we are given them sleepless nights i feel and uh, i think kudos to them for doing and executing a wonderful uh, program personally i would like to thank sai and uh, the entire coscon team for making this event a grand success in spite of the few minor technical glitches thanks a lot for acknowledging doctor yeah yeah thank you sai <clears throat> more participants would have been even more good right so yeah, what i felt even our own post graduates numbers if they had come we would have got a fairly good number sai how many participants were there total What we see in Zoom is different. What we see on the platform, I think, is different. I think. Yeah, on Zoom. Forty-four pass. Forty-four participants. Okay. 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 Doctor Shweta, will you just give tips to the postgraduates who are there? What textbooks they are supposed to be re to read to click in the examination? What books? Yeah, I always um, tell them that. Um, to read um, as many books as possible during post graduation only okay. to get a wider perspective like different views of different authors and um, and keep on um, recent advances also and for one particular specialty it is better at least especially in first and second years first years book. maybe um, you okay. have to still okay. get oriented but at least in the second okay. year is the time where you can read more and more books and into final year you are into theses and exam going everyone calls you exam going exam going exam going it is more of exam oriented in third year but if you have to get a good perspective on ophthalmology i think up till the first two years of post graduation is what takes you ahead thank you shweta i think elan uh, is here dr elan are you there dr elan kumar hello Mr. Sai, can you please uh, unmute uh, Dr. Ellen Kumaran and uh, can you allow Ellen into the let hall? him into the hall, please? Mr. Ashwin, can you do the needful, please? Hello, sir. Hello, uh, Dr. Ellen, welcome uh, back. Sir, can you please unmute uh, Dr. Ellen Kumaran's audio and uh, video? Uh, sir, just a minute, sir. Yes, please. Thank you. Hello. Oh, Helen, hello, hello. We are not able to hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Hello. I am here, sir. Yeah, yeah. We just open that WhatsApp uh, thing, Cascon uh, quiz. The results names are announced there actually. Can you just yes, announce the winners actually, Dr. Helen? Yes, sir. I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, first of all, before announcing the results again, I would like to thank. Uh, Professor Nagaraju sir and his team, Vidya Ishwaran, Dr. Vidya Ishwaran, Dr. Shweta, entire team. I think they've worked uh, as a team there to reset all the questions within 36 hours. Also, I'd like to thank Sai of Numero Tech and Abhinava, Prajwal, uh, Vishal, uh, Ashwin and team for uh, this wonderful work within this 36 hours. Sorry for the delay on the first day. Uh, the first prize goes to Dr. Sharda, sharada.m1016 at gmail.com. Second prize, Dr. Kirti, kirti377 at gmail.com. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity and doing it so well. Thank you, Dr. Elan. I think uh, one mandatory thing what we should ask is the we, we should get a confirmation that the winners are postgraduates, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that you will get it. Is, yes, we have to ask them. Correct, correct, correct. 
that you will get you don't have to worry we will, it's better if we can get their uh, kos numbers sir uh, that is if they are members if they are not members what to do if they are not members uh, yeah probably probably their professors number so that we can verify us okay, okay okay because tomorrow we don't want to land in some situation that's all okay 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 thank okay, you sir. everybody thank you thank you dr elan thank you dr vidya thank you dr shweta thank you sai and kws technical team once again thank you so much shall we end this meeting uh, sai yes doctor thank you thank you so much thank you doctor thank you sir thank you